Welcome to PMU Unveiled. I'm Leila Himchin and I'm your podcast host. I am the creator of the PMU Circle, an online membership there to bring confidence and education to artists around the world. I've also run my multiple six-figure clinic and training academy for many, many years. And I'm here to bring you unfiltered PMU talk. Let's scrap those false pretenses and the image of perfection that surround our industry. We want to keep it real, we want to educate and of course inspire you. Together we're going to challenge the norm and shed some light on the realities of being a permanent makeup artist. If you're ready to dive deep and join us make sure you hit that subscribe button and let's get going. Okay so welcome back to another episode of PMU Unveiled and today we are joined by the fabulous incredibly talented Ramona. So Ramona multi-award winning artist and trainer how does that feel? (laughs) Uh, That feels really good but like it's like kind of like (laughs) surreal like you know when I see that and I write in the message like award winning and everything it's like I just feel like really just like as almost a beginner like you know you always feel like you're just starting out you can't believe there's been like now eight years since I'm doing it and how it works and all that I still feel like I am just a beginner (laughs) because there's I was gonna say your work is um absolutely incredible I have stalked you personally for years and years and today I'd like we're going to discuss lips aren't we so this podcast is going to be focused solely on lips if you haven't seen Ramona's lip work you need to go and check it out Mona PMU Academy is that the best Instagram one for you yeah so I do have my Mona PMU Academy where it's just entirely my work and uh, training stuff I do have a studio one where because we do have like we do more treatments but kind of separated that out and then in the other page we advertise everything that we do that might not be of interest to you like okay. bikini hair removal <laughs> yeah, that's the best one Mona PMU Academy I'll put your um, Instagram link in the caption for the podcast anyway so everyone can come and follow so lips let's talk lips is it your favorite treatment to do yes lips is definitely my favorite treatment it wasn't right at the beginning though (laughs) but uh, I really come to love it when I started doing it more and more and learned like easier let's see techniques and softer techniques and you know managed to make it work for me and I really fell in love so whenever I have a lip treatment uh, my day is complete (laughs) because I think we do so many brows so so just like I, now I'm kind of trying to advertise more and more lips so you know whatever you put out there that's what clients get attracted to uh so for example I don't put eyeliners that's not my favorite thing <laughs> it's not like I don't do it I do it but I don't put it out there so people don't ask me <laughs> but but uh, lips is definitely something that I enjoy doing every single time and uh, yeah just love exploring new techniques and everything and you know making it even better all the time I absolutely love the before and afters for lips I find it can be such a dramatic change and they make amazing posts for socials (laughs) but Ramona I know there's a lot of artists out there that struggle with lips whether it's because it's taking them 10 hours to get the color in and finish they're hitting swelling and roadblocks So, I mean, I get artists say, you know, I just could not get the colour in. It just wasn't going in. I'd like to discuss some of those issues and see if you've got any any tips for our listeners. Because, yeah, I think if you can definitely learn to love lips, they are a beautiful service to offer. And as you say, it's a nice change, isn't it, from doing brows all day. I do, I've got to say, though, I do find lips tiring. Like, I'm exhausted after a set of lips. Literally (laughs) exhausted. (laughs) It is, a, it is a bit more tiring process, I would say. It's maybe a bit more monotonic uh, than it is like on brows mm. uh, because it takes longer to lips than it takes brows. So, so I think it is longer treatment. You might get more tired, but for me, the satisfaction is higher. <laughs> yeah, at the end. <laughs> at the end, yes. The, 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 goal, the final result is always more satisfactory. I don't know. It's just like I do brows really well as well. It's just like I think lips is uh, something that I really enjoy seeing the results and I 
know that clients really love the healed result and they say, oh, I didn't think it's going to make such a big difference. So in regards of the advice that I can give, so as I said, the lips has never been my favorite treatment at first. And I think that one of the main mistakes that new uh, new students, new, new perm makeup artists do is train everything at once, which I did. And at the time, it wasn't an option. You would just train everything at once. And then we did everything in like a short period of time. And then you concentrate on brows as your main seller and kind of you don't do lips for a while. And then, and even during training, I just find really overwhelming this completely different stretches completely different texture and feel to it when it's brows so you get a little bit of a shock when you start doing looks first time <laughs> yep. so i i kind of dropped it and i came back to it after watching lots of videos from russian artists and eastern european artists online at the time the only things you could get was just like really try to dig it deep down in forums and <laughs> download some videos i wasn't speaking russian at the time well i'm not speaking i to understand so I was asking my husband to translate videos for me <laughs> <laughs> and then I started doing it more and more and really found what works for me so in regards of for example the one of the main things that everyone struggles is swelling which I don't struggle anymore sometimes very rarely it's probably due to sensitivity to numbing it could be someone's directing numbing but apart from that I never really get much of a swelling maybe five percent of my clients would have you know more than like just a little bit of swelling and I think the main mistake well made be not mistake I would say because there's loads of very talented and good artists who still do that and then they get good results but they still get quite a lot of swelling after the treatment mm -hmm. so I don't pre-numb anymore and uh, it's kind of like some people say you have because it's comfort of a client I find that by the time you're pre-numbed and you're working uh, some clients don't feel much of a difference because I tried other touch-up like don't pre-numb and clients it actually was more comfortable so mm -hmm. Some clients are sensitive to pre-numbing. So the reason why pre-numbing can be not working for you is uh, one thing, your, your skin is like a sponge. So imagine prior to treatment, you fill that sponge with the cream that is made to open up the pores, to absorb, to actually go inside the skin. So you have this now, you know, lip that is already slightly swollen. It's already swollen. It's already uh -huh. slightly sensitized because it's not made to soothe the skin, the numbing. It's made to numb it. So, and as a cream consistency, so I don't, some of the clients would actually swell even prior to the treatment with a pre-numbing. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say I used to pre-numb before drawing the template. And if you pre-numb before drawing the template, you find that you're drawing on a bit slightly swollen lips. Yes. So I stopped doing that and I tried to pre-numb on the top of the template and causes other issues. And you kind of tried not to clean it off and it's harder to stretch and things like mm -hmm. that. So if I, do, I when I stop pre-numbing, honestly, like I draw my like swelling at like 90% I would say oh. because I used to have like every second client quite badly swollen so when I stopped it it really made a huge difference and as for the pain levels I don't feel like my clients have more pain and I would say otherwise they have less because it's all in your technique and you do numb during the treatment so if you do a little you know um, a little bit of uh, etching first uh, over the surface very minimally and then you numb the secondary numbing is not going to you know it's going to be not too painful for them uh, some clients don't even feel much of the outline obviously there are those one out of like 50 clients let's say who are still finding it really sensitive and you know even with the pre-numbing you'll still find this probably they will be very sensitive anyway that's kind of one of the th things that I would say I would advise to drop there is no need for pre-numbing you will find that also lip will harden so mm. as it will harden it will find that you have to push the needle more into the skin which you shouldn't be pushing actually but you will find that it's just not going as smoothly the skin is now full of the cream like it's is already hard difficult to work might be sensitive as well because uh one thing that you know it's like some people like when i apply my little one for example we went to the hospital a few times and then they apply numbing leave it for a while they take it off and the skin is red around like mm, yeah, so, yeah so sensitizing the lip already before we even do anything else well, you've started oh yeah Actually, I'm the same. Actually, I'm not a huge fan of pre-num. I rarely use pre-num. Well, I my cancel do 
don't allow us to prenum, which kind of made the decision for me quite easy <laughs> because I'm not allowed. I just say to my clients, look, I'm not allowed. But I do say to them, if you're worried, you can go to Boots, you can get some LMA4. Mm-hmm. Um, but generally, I'd say about 90% of them don't bother. No, be, and be actually, more. I find the ones that do prenum before they come in and they've been prenumming for 20 hours before they come in, <laughs> they are the biggest babies. <laughs> um, I think it's also in your head is in your stress levels if you're really stressed out you are just kind of didn't sleep the night before because you are so like thinking about the pain 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 it might be painful for you because of that reason you actually can like mentally cause yourself more pain because you just think about that thing it's just yeah. like if you have to like put those thoughts we always tell my clients just don't think about it like don't try not to stress out about it think about something else just like go so away in your mind to like another place out of here like I put the soothing music on I always play some kind of piano relaxing just so they can just kind of uh, I really like relaxing piano music loads of clients like really find it really soothing that 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 also helps if you are playing some kind of like hard rock music I know it's like some people is a preference and it's fine but for clients who's already stressed out it might not be the best option because they kind of like already stressed and this is bumpy music you know and in the beat and then they might be finding it hard to relax yes so it's important that they relax as well so that's prenumbing so i don't use prenumbing other things that students uh well students say artists do struggle even advanta artists uh, the outline yes the outline is one of the kind of trickiest parts and i know not everyone likes the outline i love the outline <laughs> I, <Yay. laughs> I, I love the outline i don't like contourless lips i, I can do them but and to be honest my lips they are not that they are, once they heal they're not outlined then, no I was going to say when you look yeah. at your lips you can see that you've outlined them but it's such a soft delicate outline it doesn't it doesn't heal yeah, with it's outline, not, does it's it? not, it doesn't heal with the outline so even mm. if you see in my work there is an outline I never had a client that came back and I saw the outline so yeah. the, it, it does kind of blend and blur in into the rest of the lips so and generally pigment slightly migrates during healing so it does fuzz up so even if you create that crisp nice line it will still blend in now if you don't do any outline and you're just doing like very soft and edgeless then it's even going to be even softer than that so my concern is then it's like well it's not going to stay like that when it's freshly done it's going to be even softer so i really prefer that like sharper edge which is not going to be sharp when it's healed as long as you do it correctly (laughs) obviously if you go in and you do that strong outline that is very deep and saturated it's going to stay but with the with my students i teach the very very soft outline that is visible but it's not oversaturated and not deep so the depth is very important and that outline that is very superficial what it will help you to do even though it's not going to stay it will help you to saturate that shading very close to the border and very tight so after healing there's no like i say visibility of outline it's just a nice saturated even result around the edges so outline is one of the most important things for I think for students to learn and there are several techniques so there's few techniques that I use and uh, some of them are for beginners some of them are for advanced I think the best outline I can get and the, this is niciest and it looks like crispiest and everything and I know it's not going to say that we but really helps to have that nice straight after result obviously for again even for social mm-hmm. media to have those nice pictures but also for for you to work closer and tighter and more uh, precise so um, i actually prefer to work in one go as much as possible so you go in or you land in you just don't dip in <laughs> to land in and then go for like one centimeter and then overlap half a centimeter and then again go in one centimeter overlap mm-hmm. backwards for half and it's just like a kind of long strokes but they are continuously in the skin and that gives even like sometimes you cleanse and there's not much visibility but once you put numbing you can see this but really really nice crisp line but you have to stay in the skin very consistently tight the same speed the same depth so this is the students always find it very difficult to learn because obviously as they go in the skin they'll go deeper 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 and that's not good because they'll get the line very strong line though <laughs> so it's you have to do it in like a classic 
stroke that in yeah. and it's the hardest technique I think for anybody to master it's the hardest um, technique but it gives the best result for me that I really like now you can achieve very close to this result by doing etching so this is what I usually teach the students who are beginners or maybe who are struggling if someone is really good we will go through another technique but in the beginning we do etching so go in a skin you stay in a skin so it's not like you are shading out in out in out and out <laughs> that was the curse yeah. <laughs> uh, so you would go in and then you would just just slightly edge and move very tightly but it's at the surface so you would go in the skin up to the level that you will feel a little bit of a vibration and you would just try to kind of almost like tear that area around by vibration movement it's almost mm-hmm. it's not like even backwards forward it's like vibration but it's, it's just like a little bit like that and you slowly go and obviously you check so it's all the most important thing is checking because even in different areas your 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 pressure might might need a little bit more of the push let's say it's not supposed to be it's not supposed to be a push but still you you might feel as the same amount of vibration different area by the skin is a little bit thicker in that area so we have to kind of always watch so every few centimeters i always cleanse a little bit and make sure the pigment is there if i don't see the pigment i sometimes apply a little bit of numbing weight you know and then and then see if it appears if it doesn't appear i'll go over the never um, just to jump in that is such an important thing is that check-in the amount of artists I speak to and they're like you know I wipe off and it's all gone and I've lost my free draw and then I'm having a meltdown check Don't wipe as off. you go like, it simplifies everything if you just do a little bit check if it's not in as Mona said you can put a bit of numbing on or just go back over it check when it's in move forward it's like sometimes it can be those simple little things that we do as standard that someone else hasn't been shown and then won't think to do it yeah they would just do the whole outline and cleanse and uh, I think I never really mm. been thought to check every like little bit I would just do like maybe half and check but then it's uh, it wasn't like a big thing at the time I think now it is very very important that you check mm. because even though you're first and it, the mistake as well that artists do they do the first bit and then they check and they're like this is great and they do the rest and then cleanse everything and then that first bit was great but the rest is not so I think one of the most important mm. things with wiping is that like lots of artists even advanced artists do mistake is that they go they go the first bit few centimeters they check it's there it's amazing it's crisp and then they do the rest of the list and cleanse everything because they think they got yeah. it but the depth changes in different areas and you might even like change your own pressure so it's it's not important just to check in one area you have to keep on checking as you go along every single few centimeters it's not just a first check so that's a, about the problem that artists do like oh I checked and like you have to keep on checking and don't wipe everything off before you check every single area just to make sure obviously when you are really experienced it can you can still trace it back and everything but even why would you do it why would you do it? waste time on, mm-hmm. on this increase the length of the treatment and then obviously that causes more trauma and everything so try to work quickly but checking is important now one of the tips that i give to students if they cleanse and then they don't see anything sometimes it's hard to for them to go back back and do line they kind of afraid to go because they don't see so i ask them to do like little little tiny dots in the area like they try to kind of look and trace it like because if you look at the edges you can see where is that like almost a blood mark is so they do little dots and dots they so well so you have to be careful so if the student is really struggling like massively then what we do we actually do dots and dots work really well on lips as well obviously you cannot go deep because again you'll <laughs> the the dots are not the lips that's <laughs> not what you want but if they're really struggling to get, usually it's down to the stretch as well so they're not doing a proper stretch or maybe they are too harsh like my students maybe sometimes they're too like they're going really deep and I'm like nah it's not good so uh, so for them to be a little bit more like safer than little dots like touch 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 and if you glance it stays really and the same on the brows like the dots stay so well mm. so so if you do little dots around the area and then and go along you will have quite a good outline out of them but just you need to do them quite close together that's a really good tip actually because you don't see that often no. for lining a lip using that technique. no not not the dots um i do use dotting technique well pointillism let's say that in the correct terms <laughs> pointillism <laughs> technique i do use for uh, like not for eyeliner i wouldn't say for eyeliner i don't use that mm-hmm. but for lips i 
and brows, I definitely use that. And especially for the scar areas, like it works wonders. So let's see if you have a client with lots of scarring or like re regardless of what kind of scarring. Obviously, if you shade, you still tear the skin a little bit. So regardless of how you shade slow and fast, it's still it's still going to put more trauma to skin than just the dot. So like if client comes back and the scarring did not pick up enough, I would go over the scars with dotting technique. Pointillism. <laughs> Pointillism. <laughs> so we'll do the point <laughs> what you made. on the on the on the little areas that I have scar. It, it really works re really, really well. So or let's see cleft lip. Um if I have clients with a cleft lip, they usually obviously the it's the tissue is a scar tissue there. So when I do the outline, if I do the dot in that scar tissue and around to kind of really saturate that area, it works really well as well if it doesn't usually the first session i don't tend to use it i try to just go with like with just whatever technique i use and then once they come back if there is any areas that like was a problematic and i didn't take the pigment then i would use the pointillism or at least if it, it, they had a cold sore or they picked and it's just like a regular area didn't take the color no but if it's a scarred area that didn't take the color because the problem with scars is like sometimes they take too well and sometimes they don't take well enough yeah. So if the first time you go over and do point loss, they might be oversaturated. So so I just go with the regular technique. And if they don't take enough, then I would go for a stronger technique because you don't want to oversaturate them. It depends on the texture of it. But yeah, that's kind of the techniques that I do for the mm -hmm. outline. Two techniques, well, and point to listen, <laughs> if needed. <that's laughs> the, uh, the SOS kind of thing. Yeah, what are the other struggles? To be honest, like, you know, shading, saturation, and all of these things like you know students find it sometimes difficult i think main things comes down to the stretching and it's not stretching as good as you can as strong as you can it's stretching enough that's what's important it's not over stretching also because what happens with over stretching you actually create lines like if you stretch so well like you actually get like a line in here so, so your skin is it's it's not actually nicely stretched you like i prefer to like push into the lip more than i stretch so using the cotton pads inside using i i prefer the cotton pads that are a bit damp just a little bit damp and drain it really well don't put up the dry ones it's not nice i hate that makes me go funny <laughs> so i, I dampen them I, I drain them i put them inside so i usually just fold in half and put only in the area where you need so the client is not sitting there with a full mouth of cotton pads because <laughs> you do need to change them it gets you know the saliva soaked in in them so yeah really nice I actually have decided to not be usually I used to put like the whole thing and keep it for quite a long and work but then I have done a lot training with, online and uh, we was filming a video and as I was editing video like I, we left the we left the model obviously for a few minutes and the video was still going and then I was reviewing back she actually I think I was talking behind the scenes and something and then she smiled <laughs> so <laughs> and so I was <laughs> running uh, because she, she pushed into the soak and pie and I'll, from that moment I'll just like no from now I'm keeping on keeping <laughs> out because she didn't see me anything but she was just sitting there it was like at the dentist like they get soaking anyway yes. a disgusting topic yes. <laughs> but yeah don't leave it for too long uh just just I what I do now I just take one cotton pad if I work in this area I'll just push it in under there I work in that area then I'll either move it I'll take another one and then work here and there so you just put where you need you don't have to put it everywhere and then work because it will get that body little fluids soaked in and it's not going to feel nice for the client and they might want a break from it as well uh, and i don't <laughs> use the plastic ones well the rub i don't know silicone ones like the mouth shields i tried the different ones the expensive ones cheaper ones i don't feel they're like comfortable for a client also uh -huh. if you need to take it out the question is do you clean and put it back in like it's just a little bit of like hygiene thing as well like i think cotton pad it put it in take it out throw it away oh, take a new yeah. one but this is like if you had to take it out like do it and wash it put it back in i don't know it's just a little bit like uh yucky yeah <laughs> um, and they make me gag i tried one once and yeah i am the same. Like, <laughs> yeah, i'm the same it makes me gag i feel like it's too much in mm. my mouth so the other 
of the things you can use. There's this roller things uh, for the dentist as well. Oh, yes. That's what they can roll then, like a little, like a yeah, cigarette thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't, I'm not smoking, by the way. It's just reminds me that. So yeah, you can use those ones instead. But it really helps with stretching because if you have that background in there and then you just place your fingers on the top, it will give you enough of the stretch. And using another cotton pad on the top as well, so you support with a cotton pad it's a wider area that will spread stretch to lift a little bit you know wider as opposed to like a tiny area working in sections so you stretch the tiny section so you stretch correctly into, instead of stretch, stretching half of a lip in one go so all those things are really important because uh, without them you will then putting too much trauma causing swelling if there is a swelling there is uh, interstitial fluids building up in the skin making the the skin tighter and then obviously you're putting the pigment and skin is leaking and pigment is going out so that will cause you not to be able to apply the pigment the less swelling the better sometimes a little bit of swelling is nice for pictures but realistically it's actually mm. no swelling is good for the actual retention so it's only good for the pictures <laughs> but this <it> looks, <laughs> looks smoother and fuller but uh, overall the less swelling there is the better it is that means the the skin will be able to accept more of the pigment so yes tiny sections stretching support from underneath and above i if you haven't learned using your little finger for stretching this is like a crucial point for lips especially i think for brows you can go around it. there's ways mm -hmm. of you can it, it's fine even still i'm like i'm a big fan of little finger <laughs> i think most of the artists do but the beginners find it really like oh it's i can't fun. do it i don't know i don't know how like you have to learn just sit down and try to like practice you know putting it on your own somewhere and with a pencil or it's, it's really important because for all for example on the lips i stretch in between of my thumb right hand thumb and left hand little finger so i stretch i use those two fingers to actually push the lip like from above and below and i work mm -hmm. so and i when i do like the outline uh especially for the outline that's when i work i work in between of my thumb and little finger so i know my stretch is always consistent it's always in between of thumb and little finger and that stretch is like a little push up because push up is also a stretch it doesn't have to stretch apart it can be pushed up but it's so the consistency of the stretch is most important and that way you can really have it very consistent when you do that in between so learn your little finger and i wasn't a fan by the way for about two years i didn't use it and, and i was like right i just have to, do it, have to do it and i saw lots of artists doing it. and i was like and i started using it and the more you use the more you try you will find that this is like a really comfortable way of doing it yeah. once you learn it there's just like not something that we do actually i always use to use my little finger when I drink coffee or tea like, oh, out there you know like, <laughs> so it's the most like, important tool <laughs> as always like they're like doing something so um that the using your little finger for the stretch but obviously if you are not comfortable and if you're using your little finger but as you work your little finger moves is not good you have to learn the way that your little finger wouldn't move so yeah and that's why you work from your index finger so your work is just from the index finger it's not from the wrist it's not from the all fingers you just support your hand with the middle finger and with the thumb not hand the uh, device so you kind of grip it with those fingers and then your mid your index finger is for the push for that movement so as as the movement is just from index finger you'll find that the rest of the hand doesn't move but yeah. it's just like something that you learn with experience um practice even on latex so when you practice on latex try to do that and then you will and there's also latexes for lips especially there's so many different shapes and textures you can buy they're not expensive and you can learn that little finger stretch as well doing on those ones like a 3d ones there's so many different ones now yeah, there's lips. loads of them now isn't yeah. there they're really good actually to practice lips on they are amazing for lip practice yes and mm -hmm. then uh, actually originally before they were available i did this thing uh, i bought the uh, what's called a flash as a sex toy for men <laughs> Oh, what's it? Now this is dedication. So <laughs> yeah, so so basically, I I chopped the top thing of it <laughs> where the lips are, and actually has teeth and everything. It's quite realistic and it's very like like soft and squishy so it wasn't taking pigment very well but in terms of positioning and stretching i still have 
you can really tr like learn to feel it and you can actually stretch as well like as a lip tissue stretches I, I can't picture you tattooing there <laughs> you're, you're a completely different image in my head <laughs> I need I think well that was uh, I had it like four years ago I put it on my stories so, <laughs> like, <laughs> so but it's good like you can like it's actually quite good for practice like it's yeah. weirdly enough you can actually like you know practice the stretches quite well on it so I have was doing that for a while but now I'm kind of just getting the regular stuff from <laughs> I just found the ones we tap in nowadays <laughs> well the, the regular ones that wasn't available or the ones yeah. that was that was really hard like mm. and, like, and you like couldn't tap with them anyway could you I remember the first lot that come out no it wasn't so now now you don't need to buy a sex toy to practice <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, but the... I love your um, thinking outside of the box though, so, uh... <laughs> it's like the only way you can learn it was just like oh i was actually trying to even talk to the manufacturer of sex toys <laughs> can you produce like a, a bit harder of a texture and then they <laughs> did they produced a like, harder thing and then they they sent it to me i think i had too much of like like too much kind of criteria so they was just like not replying to me <laughs> like can you make the teeth a little bit different and then, oh, okay, like right blocked <laughs> so, like they're not going into conversation so but they actually sent me like another prototype of similar um and i have it and it's like a more of a natural lip with the texture with the lines which is also mm -hmm. good to kind of like yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. another topic <laughs> but i need to take pictures and, and send it to you so you know how <laughs> you <laughs> have to <laughs> yeah so what else template drawing i think lots of people struggle with the template drawing what do you think is like another like biggest the like, difficulty for students is... yeah i would say the swelling is definitely because i feel like the swelling leads on to everything else like you've got loads of swelling now you can't implant your pigment so I think definitely what you've said is to try and keep swelling to a minimum it's going to make every other part of that treatment much more enjoyable and then slow down I would say when I watch I feel like it's really easy to get impatient with lips because in the beginning you feel like you're getting nowhere and then instead of staying consistent and working slow and section by section I yep. see people just start Ooh, all over because now they're rushing and they just want to get the job done and actually then I think it takes you twice as long so my biggest tip would definitely be to just keep it slow work consistently and do section by section and you will actually finish quicker yeah I, I do the same so with the students I see that uh, first of all I do the outline numb the outline so it's more visible I don't actually etch the whole lip which is also an option for the clients to have more comfort but again that high hardens the tissue so I actually prefer just to do the outline numbing and then the, and then work without the numbing for as long as I can and do pack as much pigment well not pack as much as I can but pack to the amount that I want at like almost like 90% for mm -hmm. what I want uh, so when I work in little sections so my outline is complete I'm just starting from whichever corner you choose to it, it doesn't really matter to be honest which area you start shading from then I usually start from from the top left corner of the mm -hmm. lip this is a habit I guess it's not really you know there's no really a uh, difference way to start but anyway they I would do like about centimeter to two centimeter sections and saturate them at the level of about 90% to what I want not 90% to how much skin can take yes. <laughs> <laughs> like not like getting that like you, you need to think of what the result you want to achieve and then work saturated up to the level that you want to achieve almost that you're happy almost happy with the with the situation and then because you have that crisp outline as well you try to blend that color to the outline mm -hmm. and then just through the whole you know not just a little bit close to the outline but the whole lip, you know up to mucous membrane blending into mucous membrane and then work little sections until you're fully happy with the top lip then do the bottom and then I come back again where uh, after numbing and where I see little gaps and then saturate mm -hmm. more in those areas ideally I want to put as much pigment as I can in that first go just obviously because of you know avoiding oh, working numbing. before the, the swelling working before numbing that also helps even pre uh, uh, numbing during the treatment it does make skin harder so also it can cause for bruising or so you see if you have
have your lips bleeding and if you apply secondary numbing straight away on the bleeding you will get a bruise key point here if your lips are bleeding don't rush to apply the numbing press them like if there's i'm not talking about heavy bleeding heavy bleeding should be out of the question but even if a pinpoint bleeding appears which is normal it does appear we scratch the skin depends on the client's you know sensitivity how thin their blood is and how high pressure do they have <laughs> and yeah. the so a press the area wait for a couple of seconds allow it to, you know a couple of seconds as well to see there is no blood appearing on the surface only then apply numbing because what you'll do you will restrict the surface of the skin it will shrink down but the inside will still bleed so you will get that's a really good uh, really good tip yeah because you would notice let's see you can even try if you have bleeding apply numbing straight away you will get a little bit of blueiness in there mm. so so that just waiting for bleeding to subside before you apply numbing is very important for not getting bruising you can still get bruising obviously if you're too harsh <laughs> but but if you're and over stretching as well do you find sometimes when you see people over stretch the lip skin yeah. then that they actually cause more trauma yeah and just be gentle as well like i'm very gentle generally with the with all my techniques i don't want like rub harsh i don't you know stretch harsh is it's firm my my pressure i would see my pressure on the client i'm heavy on the client myself so my hands are heavy on the client and my pressure is heavy is more heaviness that they feel because they feel like i'm on them yeah, <laughs> as yeah. opposed to the, the how harsh i am because the movements are soft and this is what you usually because when i do models with the students i said what's the difference do you feel mm -hmm. and they say, i really feel you on me like i really feel you like that like you know your hands are on as yeah. opposed to the student and they're like so soft on the they stretch to touch the client yeah they're like in the mm -hmm. air with the hands they, they stretch but then and then they work like so they kind of put so much trauma because the the whole weight goes to that device as yeah. a foot on the client and device is like very soft in their hands so ground yourself on the client just like feel relaxed don't feel tense sometimes i work standing and i have to hold my hand up but still like my then pinky finger and my other hand i'm I'm kind of the the weed goes here and there, yes. and the device is is still even my hand is up in the air. The whole weed goes in here anyway, or on the wrist or somewhere. It's not it's not like I'm not holding the device in the air, and it's always grounded in my finger on the little mm -hmm. finger. So that's really important because otherwise you won't feel the skin. You will not feel it. You actually, if you are sometimes too harsh, you will not see any pigment. So you will be too harsh to because your skin imagine Imagine if it's not stretched, you're going in with a needle and you're just like kind of like wiggling it around like that to cause trauma with no pigment. So if it's so you're wiggling it around and uh, it's just putting a trauma, you're not going to implant any pigment. So for the for the implantation of pigment, the firm stretch, the soft device, scratching through the surface. And when I shade, I try to do like a little bit of a longer movement and I try to be in the skin almost all the time, mm -hmm. which is I know sometimes you think like in the skin. Skin. and I call it pendulum I know lots of people my friend Alexandra as well she does a zigzag technique which is a signature technique of hers so it's a kind of similar as well it's like you are in the skin you're going backwards forwards you're like you know you kind of I see people battering almost like gliding through backwards forwards so you not lift but you don't go deeper or more shallow it's always the same because yeah. lips are slightly like rounded anyway when you stretch so it's not like a completely flat surface mm. so when you do this almost like pendulum but not coming out from the skin it it does does saturate the lip very well and i used to work with a high speed i used to get good results and heals no problem but i used to get more swelling so i would find that the high speed you get more swelling so by slowing down the speed and your hand movement because it's not just about the hand the the, the device speed if the device speed is low your hand speed is low if your device speed is high you have have to work in the high speed with your hand as well so it's like you have to correlate you have to mm. work together with the device you just have to find that feeling and this hearing as well so hearing the the device this the scratch is very important because you can actually hear the needle going through the skin and if you don't it's most likely that you do something incorrectly yes. <laughs> so so you have to hear this like movement like yes. <laughs> like <laughs> so it's like the device is picking the needle is it's not like picking a slightly going in the skin with a tiny pick you need
need that pack. You need a little bit of that pack. Uh, you need to kind of the device needs to go in the skin so that mm -hmm. a cold like is almost like slightly tearing the skin, <laughs> but yeah. like at a very minimal level. If you go with a high hand speed but slow device speed, you will tear the skin mm -hmm. apart. So if you're like watching artists online and they say work on four or three or whichever, which is fine as long as you work very slow. And I work on four as well sometimes. And then I usually tend to work about 4.5, 4.2 on lips. But if I ever go higher, that means that my hand speed goes higher. So you have to correlate both things, not just like... Yes. A... Do you know what? Actually, I am a big fan of working slow for lips. And I think that has a lot to do with why I don't really get much swelling either. I've tried every time I try a different machine or changing like raising speed, I always end up with swelling. So I think I, I don't like big strokes on lips. Um, and I don't like fast machine speeds because yeah, I do find I just cause so much more trauma. I don't mind high strokes. I, I do mm. have the Masia, which is four. I think it's mm. four. Yeah, I think it's like the, the stroke is four point two it's quite high it got oh, quite yeah, long. Yeah. and I do sometimes look for that one but the key is obviously that you work from the tip of the needle you work from the hearing from the stretch because if you have a little bit of the let's see darker lips or like more thicker skin texture like that longer stroke helps to push through the needle because mm -hmm. on the lips I work with the small needles always 0 0.25 sometimes 0 0.30 but generally you always use a 1RL always i am a fan of one yes it's a one a single needle girl i, I get single yeah thing. it takes longer a time i wouldn't say it takes longer i feel like with the one point i'm more precise the i know that every single dot that i do it's is thought that it's it's to go in mm -hmm. because you see the bigger combinations to use the more likely that some of your more some of your punctuations would not go in as a larger surface like because you know if you take a bunch of pencils that try to push through the piece of paper like you have to hit hard you take one you just hit and will punctuate through the mm -hmm. paper it's yeah. just as easy as that so i know that every single punctuation is thoughtful and is, is going in the skin which with bunch of the needles i have less control as an artist so for mm -hmm. me because i like precision i don't feel like a larger combinations works for me if you want those just a little bit of love blush uh with no contour or anything uh, you can work with the larger i find that also with the larger combinations it saturates that surface epidermis with a lot of pigment there's a lot of there and it looks like it's a lipstick technique and once it heals it heals so soft so even that contrast i don't like that contrast i like yeah. to almost like work with what i see on lips i mainly work with the organic pigments i try to work more with the like translucent colors less that I dark side I still work with the, the the colors that are more lipsticky more titanium dark side as long as a client is aware and they want but as of generally my favorite technique that's what I recommend to clients is having a vibrant darker deeper tones less saturation mm -hmm. so you need to work for less time so you need to leave gaps in between of your dots your client will have the definition because it's deeper tone and uh, they will have visual visually like nice result like visible and, and defined but they also will have that translucency in their lips that will actually is good long term because you can change it and so on it will obviously it will not going to leave any chalky results but it's less work so it's less work for you better results for the client but I do have clients who want lipstick results or they want this like almost like a matte appearance on their lips they really like it and in that case I, I explain to clients and they come and say do you want the color that will appear matte on your skin almost like lipstick or do you want something that looks more natural but visible so and it's more translucent I say imagine a lip gloss imagine like a matte lip yes. lipstick and then do through that I can understand what a client wants and then just choose according but I do tell to them like over the years that it's going to look matte it's not going to go backwards looking translucent <laughs> but if it's an elderly lady who's been applying this pink lipstick for <laughs> years and years and years and it's just that this one color that she loves she's not going to like her translucent results <laughs> so you have to be as well like understanding that sometimes that titanic dark side colors they are needed because it's just the type of a client that you have and they will be happy with that result but with the young clients especially i just like there's uh that the the usually they don't know exactly
exactly what they want. They go with the trends and, and things like that. So just doing it a bit less saturation with the deeper tones is going to be really good for them for the future and you have a good result. And I love how um, I'm, I'm, I kind of work the same in the sense that I, I do a lower saturation but darker colour. And I just much prefer the ageing of that kind of yes. finish and technique. When they come back in a couple of years' time, it's nice. It's just diffusing out nicely. Like you don't get that that build up of color well my i most of the times i add a little bit of vine in my mm. mix so whenever i use because i as well i don't like very vibrant colors so when i use just red or just like deep pink or something i'm not a fan of bright lipsticks i'm fan of more of like a purpley earthy tones mm. myself so i prefer to go for the more of a like kind of the plummy tones in the yeah. client but it's saying that obviously you have to watch at what's suitable for the client <laughs> this so, was a question i had for you actually just while we're on colors is how fussy are you when you're picking tones for lip clients mm-hmm. obviously we know you know if you see a lot of cool in a lip you don't really want to be using say that plummy color but i know a lot of artists it's like 50 50 with this some artists are like yeah. really doesn't actually make that much difference on a lip and some <laughs> artists are like to the t like you you know you mustn't use this this or this or how, what's your views on this mona i like it's to be honest like changes like we all change our, like I think we all all are just like kind of like learn new things and everything it changes through the years I used to like this I don't like this and now through the experience I learned the, now as of now next year if you would do a podcast I might be saying <laughs> change their mind now <laughs> but, but as of it stands now with eight years as I am in the industry and I was using lots of different colors and tattooings and everything and so I I I think that most of our clients do suit. We're not talking about by the way neutralization. Not neutralization. So no, if we are talking standard. about the Patrick one, two, three, four, yes. four sometimes because you sometimes have mixed traits with really light lips. So I'm talking about not pigmented lips. So there's no melanin present. Well, very minimal melanin present mm-hmm. in their lips. It's very pale. I think most of our clients do suit colder tones. Generally, I think it kind of brings out the the color of the eyes more it just goes more together I know that there is like sometimes it looks a bit more peachy sometimes a bit more pinkish but when you wear no makeup I feel like that colder tones does complement the face better because we're talking about how the client looks with no makeup on yes. we are talking about client looks with the makeup and they have full foundation and everything else but with no anything because generally like the if we think about blood color and everything it's a little bit more of a colder tone mm-hmm. regardless of who, who it is like a blood color is a blood color it's not yeah. like it's like a more of a cherry I would say color so I think like a cherry color would suit almost like everyone but there are clients who do have you know different it's like you know like let's say if you would show me three pictures of yourself one with red hair or yourself one with blonde and one with black <laughs> and then I might like the red and then but maybe another person would like blonde on you and another person would yeah, like yeah. you might like so and it's so it's the beauty is like in the eye of the beholder and uh, like you can take the top whatever artists in the world for lip blushing and one artist would say that this would suit like you know she just line would suit a warmer tone and another so i know there is a lot of theory behind it which if you train with different artists they'll likely tell you different things so i do try, try to go with the client what they like and i try to ask them to think like before they come in what colors do you tend to wear how do you feel good like which colors do you feel good in mm. if you have no idea <laughs> whatsoever <laughs> like just do whatever you think I have no idea I never put lipstick on obviously we go with something natural okay. and I'm not the artist that works with one session I don't I don't like it I know that you ever say oh you just do it in one session and it's done but what if the client doesn't like that healed color mm-hmm. you know is there so many variables and then they might think they like this color but once it's there and it's like permanent they start thinking well this is permanent I might like it today but tomorrow like it's so many things so I always see my clients there's a two session 
sections and there's possibility we might need more but usually we get the result to section i don't oversaturate the lips i explain them that to, to them i said mm -hmm. i don't oversaturate so you just likely that with the first session you feel like it's too little but we will see the tone how do you feel with that tone in your lip and if it's not oversaturated next time let's say we did a peachy tone or whatever like you know okay let, let, let's say we did a strawberry red but i didn't oversaturate i just did you know like like i left gaps in between of my dots <laughs> <laughs> and then once they heal and they come back and they say actually just too warm for me like i would more, we more want more of a chariot color it's easy for me just to take something that is cold pink go over it and make it more of a cherry like so yeah. but if i went full on with that color it will be really hard to change so it is perm makeup we have to remember it is a permanent makeup and then we don't want and i've done mistakes not like mistakes it's, it, it's not like mistake this is what we've been taught this is what mm. we learned initially was what we did and i wouldn't consider that as a mistake it was what i knew at that time <laughs> at that moment. we are i think we are an um, industry that is forever yes learning I mean. and developing and improving so i think now the more experience i have the more cautious approach mm -hmm. i take towards my towards my approach to clients <laughs> yeah, yeah. so it's like it's like color selection everything it's just you know i want to go with natural seeing that i do have clients that want really strong results and as so as long as i know and i feel good about that okay this client actually wants this i don't have doubts like oh like maybe they won't like it i know that this client particular client she has tattoos on her face she has this funky hair she just like she already is very like she wants these very bright strong results strong brows strong eyeliner strong lips i will go for it but if a client is generally a natural look i would not go for it so that's just my advice the same goes to going outside the lip contour i am obviously i've done that i've done i think everyone has done that and we're still doing that <laughs> and sometimes as much as i try not to go over i'm like oh, i still went a little bit over there or something it's just so difficult to get that shape right without going over uh, yeah but i think it's how much you go over it's how much you go over but i would i say to students and myself i try to do that i try to correct lip and side so i correct lip shape by reducing the lip size <laughs> instead of increasing and overdoing it yeah so but i have clients sometimes coming back and say i still can see a little bit of my lip there and if they feel like it does look symmetrical but if they feel like they don't want to i would probably rather go a little bit unsymmetrical but not go outside than go completely symmetrical but go outside because it's again it's about thinking what happens in five years and then uh, but there are cases when i would go outside so if they already have previous pair of makeup and they are not going to remove and i know like we say like oh we should remove we should try to do but like there are clients who are not going to remove and if i won't do it they will go elsewhere and i can do the better job maybe like correcting that color so then they will go to someone who'll say yeah i'll just do anything yes. <laughs> so yes. so if i if they don't approve i would go over a little bit but try to reduce and not to over saturate the line or something and just do like a little bit of blush to blend in everything if it's already done if it's if it's cleft lip obviously like we have to do something with that and i in that case i even use the white color to contour it works amazingly well especially the cupid's bow it's car tissue there anyway it looks white it looks like it's mm -hmm. like a skin color or like whatever so contouring the cupid's bow with white on a cleft lip makes a huge difference it really stands out and it's you know it's not going to look worse over the years they already have scarring it's not going to change it, it does make a huge difference so there are things that i do out of the box it's not like this this but it has to be certain cases but for regular clients make cautious decisions <laughs> don't work outside the lip don't do it <laughs> yes okay i have one more question for you well it's kind of two i guess but what <laughs> is your advice to clients for one prepping so we done a whole coaching call didn't we for pme circle members on skin prep and everything but what would be the most important factors that you would advise a client to do before they come in for their treatment and, and then what about your aftercare what's your post care so i think it's it's quite of like a general advice i would say for lips lip tissue 
tissue is very sensitive, it can get dehydrated very quickly. So I'll just explain what I advise for clients obviously prior. So before they come in, I advise to drink plenty of water for a few weeks coming in. But like, I mean, a lot of water. I'll ask you that if you can drink three liters a day. <laughs> like, it's like, obviously, they probably won't, those who are not drinking, but just like they would be more cautious not to drink coffee of a day. It dehydrates the skin. It makes you to go to a toilet and then toilet. So you, you don't want the clients dehydrated. You don't want the clients to have a drink a day before or two days before. Alcohol dehydrates you really badly. So if we get dry lips, I just say just reschedule. So so basically, like do everything that you can not to dehydrate the skin. So no alcohol, no coffee, plenty of water. And it is coming to a treatment. Try not to get your lips like in the cold in a cold weather that will affect them. I am I used to advise scrubbing a day before. I changed that. So I think the lip tissue is so sensitive you can damage by scrubbing as well. So you can use exfoliating creams instead. So if you can apply the exfoliating cream a day before or a few days before that, that's fine. But I wouldn't actually do physical scrub with sugar or something because that actually damaged the, the lip tissue. But the exfoliating, you know, with creams with peptides left for 10 minutes and cleansed off and apply ointment. Plenty of ointment weeks coming to the treatment. Not Vaseline, but something moisturizing. I said, just use coconut oil if you don't have anything else, but keep on moisturizing them. Or you can send the little ointment to them before they're coming in as well, like A&D or something. They actually really like it. I don't send them. <laughs> just, just use coconut oil. But, <laughs> but actually, if they come in and the consultation first, I sometimes give it, if I see that mm. they are kind of complicated, then I say, well, take this ointment, use it before coming in. So I do that with some clients, not with everyone. So that's like a good general advice. I think everyone does that, but I would not recommend to scrub the lips a couple of days coming before the treatment because you can put trauma on them instead of actually exfoliating. And uh, on the day of the treatment, I do always apply now a moisturizing cream, either Harmony by Biotech, uh, that's a kind of just like a soothing cream, or I have another cream that is like from the skincare that we we, we have at the clinic. It's called uh, Tebiskin Hydra, which has uh, urea. Urea also helps to like kind of like almost exfoliate a little bit as like soothing and 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 really really moisturizing cream so i might apply that one for a few minutes i wouldn't leave it for too long so you just want to apply it just to kind of absorb into that dry bits if there is any dry bits on the skin uh, if the skin is really good if it doesn't look dry or anything i might not you know pre-moisturize it but if they if they look like they have a little bit of dryness i would definitely pre-moisturize it i would also use a hyaluronic acid gel in my green soap or whatever or water if you use just water I use a little bit of the pink soap actually it smells nice <laughs> <laughs> so I use that and I put a little bit of hyaluronic acid gel any brand it's just that it makes water a little bit of like slimy gooey it feels better or then as you wipe your cotton pads becomes less abrasive they become a little bit like more slidey slimy so it doesn't it's not as abrasive to this lip tissue during the treatment if I feel like the lip is dry then I would, you know, press into with a cotton pad uh, with like hyaluronic acid and just try and maybe gently kind of try to take take away those, um, keep it on or even reapply the cream during the treatment. If I have a dry areas, I reapply the cream, allow it to soak in a little bit and try it and then those dry bits usually just comes off. Ideally, you don't want to have them, but if they appear, that really helps. And if the lips are dry, I prefer to work on like a more wet surface so I would press the wet pad on the lip hold it for a little bit and then start working on the lip because if you press and hold the wet it kind of makes the skin more soft as opposed to dry it and then work on the dry because it's a bit different to brows so you do want that lip to be a little bit wet you want that to be you know not dry if it's dry it will actually tear much easier much quicker and you put more trauma so things like that uh, and everything do not use the alcohol wipes on the lips definitely not because it will dehydrate your lip prior to working it will actually sensitize it quite badly so definitely use something like a chloroxidine clinisep there's lots of others that would not actually cause any damage to the skin it just will disinfect it so that I, I sometimes apply a little bit of vaseline through i don't think vaseline is that moisturizing not vaseline in the ointment something mm. i feel like just working with the creams and hyaluronic acid is, is better for me than using a vaseline during the treatment and post care first day cleansing your lips often with the wet cotton pads just like wiping it off so you want to wipe off any surface liquid 
that appears on the skin and dabbing it dry. And I do say apply a little bit of that. If you say on brows, I don't recommend to apply any ointment for the first day or two, depending on the client. But on lips, I, they st I still say apply the ointment, but then cleanse it often and then drop it dry, apply a little bit of ointment, cleanse it again. And so keep on cleansing every one to two hours for the first day, plus apply a little bit of the ointment, not too much. You don't want them to be soaked in an ointment as well. Just like a tiny amount, because as well, if you apply too much ointment, it can stop from lip to close, like the skin to close down. You want the skin to actually close down and not to stay open. And from day two, it's just cleansing it two times a day and applying ointment whenever they feel it lips are dry. So it's just not keeping a lips dry so that they don't get cracks on them. It's not good for healing either, but not keeping them over saturated with ointment either. I think cleansing for the first day is very, very important for all areas of fair makeup. And that's all. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's it all done <laughs> I think I think that's all Amazing. but yeah yeah I agree hydration 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 it makes such a difference when you're tattooing someone's lips if they're dehydrated and then yeah we're the same with cleansing regularly and then balming as and when needed I don't like the dry healing thing no. uh, I think it's just like so hard on client and oh. I don't know if it's going to cause and the thing is benefit. you you want your clients to have a nice experience and you want them to be comfortable don't you especially during that healing phase it's like whenever you have a scab like if you leave it dry it's going to be really like it's it's not going to heal as nicely as for example i buy these patches like for spots like a healing like plaster so see when i have a spot or something i would apply the plaster on it even on a scab it's just to keep the environment a little bit moist yes uh, but it doesn't because especially if you apply makeup on it it dehydrates even more and it, you have pretty much or scabbing off and then another scab on the top so if I just put a plaster I put makeup on the top it really makes a difference it just keeps that that area and it heals it in a few days which if I keep all leaving it dry and cleansing and maybe applying some makeup on it <laughs> it's just, which clients do as well they, it will make it even worse so yeah. keeping it a little bit moist environment definitely is helping with the healing from what my understanding and experience is amazing well guys i hope you have found this useful mona has thrown a whole ton of tips and little golden nuggets at you <laughs> so it's definitely been a brilliant listen so i hope you find it useful Mona thank you so much for your time today with this one it's been brilliant yeah, thank you for inviting me Leila <laughs> and don't forget Mo at Mona PMU Academy go and check her out say hello and give her a little thank you for her time yeah definitely get in touch if you have any questions I always answer might not straight away but I definitely answer it doesn't you don't have to be my student uh, to get advice from me so well, yes. so helpful okay I'll let you get back to your day Mona thank you thank you Leila okay bye and that wraps up another brilliant episode I hope you guys are enjoying if you are we would really really appreciate dropping us a little review below it will help our channel to reach more artists and hopefully we can support more and more people on a regular basis. Don't forget my inbox is always open. So if you have any questions at all for me or there's anything or anybody you'd like to see featured on the podcast, just drop me a DM. We're always here for you and I will catch up with you over on the next episode.